atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, for there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible, no disease incurable, there's an atmosphere, there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible, and no disease For the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding will be flooded with light that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what is your glorious inheritance in us as saints and what is that incomparable great power available yes for every believer that same power which you demonstrated in Christ when you raised him from the dead father I thank you for open scriptures open understanding and open eyes that we may behold the Lord Jesus Christ thank you for rhema which will be imparted to each and every person and thank you that nobody will live here like they came in the name of the lord jesus and the glorious church say amen. amen hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the lord hallelujah so greetings once again in the awesome name of Jesus, more volume, yeah. in the awesome name of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, we're going to talk, um, we're going to talk about our identity in Christ, amen, amen. we're going to talk about our identity in Christ because that links with what God is doing right now in our midst, um, one of the prophetic words, well, another part of the prophetic word which God gave us for the year he says it will be a year of revival glory and also extraordinary accomplishments amen and uh, when God is given a word it's our responsibility to build according to that word um, by way of the word of God God's word is God's building material amen it's God's building material for our lives um, Acts chapter 20 verse 32 says and I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified so God's word is always God's building material any area in your life that God speaks of in order to build yourself there you need to engage the word of God in that area whether it be health whether it be finances whether it be career whether it be school or wisdom whatever it may be you will need to engage the word of God in that area amen and so when it comes to extraordinary accomplishments we have the scripture and uh, please put it up uh, Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 right um, Daniel eleven thirty-two. Daniel 11 verse 32 it says those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt he shall corrupt with flattery the speaker is not audible no? all right okay but you can hear me okay okay well if you responded it means you heard me <laughs> um, those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery but the people who know their God shall be what? Strong and carry out great exploits. So he speaks of, there are three things we see there in the B part of the scripture. He talks about the people that know their God. And then he says, they shall be strong. And this is speaking about identity, right? And then he says, they will do great exploits. So great exploits are a function of your knowing God and your knowing your identity. Amen. And by way of identity, I've said this for weeks now, there's two aspects to our identity, our identity in Christ and our prophetic identity. Today, I want to deal with our identity in Christ. Amen. Who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah, who we are in Christ Jesus, who God has made us to be in Christ Jesus, who we've come to become in Christ Jesus. Amen. The understanding of this is what will translate to uh, 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 some, it's what will translate to X 
exploits, right, to what you do. A lot of the times, one of the, especially in this nation of South Africa, one of the biggest crises is the crisis of identity, right? Because uh, South Africa has largely been a, a nation where people have not been fathered. People don't know their fathers. You know, only less than 10% know their fathers. In fact, less than 5% know their fathers. Largely, it's a fatherless generation. And when you have a fatherless generation, it means that people don't know who they are. It's your father who gives you your identity. It's your father who tells you who you are, who reassures you. He, he, it's his responsibility. Your mother then helps you to grow in that, but it takes the voice of a father to do that, right? Now, I'm not saying our mothers have not given us identity, but it's a, it's a wrong, it's, it's wrong roles. You see that? There's something that happens to a person when their father has told them certain things. Those things do not leave their hearts. There's a confidence that comes in when a father has spoken to a child. So our nation is largely a, a, a nation that does not know itself. You see that? They don't know themselves because of this crisis. Now that thing has also crept into the church because a lot of people don't know who they are in, 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 in the church in South Africa. They've not been assured of who they are. And when you don't know who you are, who you are you'll, be, you'll, be at ama you'll be amazed at things that you already carry. Things that you already carry, things that are already within you, your, your ability and your grasp will keep shocking you. And it's, it's simply because you don't know yourself. You will look up to people that are supposed to be looking up to you. Why? You don't know yourself. And my spiritual father always uses the, the, the example of David. How David, David slew Goliath. And after slaying Goliath, you know, he was given the reward of, of having the king's daughter. And then he said, who am I that I should have the king's daughter? But he was already the man who was supposed to be king. He was the king's replacement. You see that he was a one who was better than Saul. So it was a privilege for Saul to have his daughter get married to David. But the issue is David did not know himself. You see that. So your identity is very important. It helps you it helps you not settle for certain things. You see that. It helps you not conform to certain things. People conform because they don't know who they are. They go, they live like uh, uh, one of the story of the prodigal son is a story of a person who did not know himself. And that's why when the Bible says when he came to his mind, when he came back to his mind, he says my father's servants live better than this. But it was a story, it, it's a story of a man who lacked identity. Identity. Amen? Amen? All right. So identity in Christ. So the first important thing that you must know about who we are in Christ, uh, the most important, the first thing is that you are born again. You see that? That's the first thing about our identity, that you are born again. And I know that people, when you say you are born again, it's like, I mean, come on, apostle. Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, Melchizedek, oh, you can do better than that. But that's such a rich statement that you are born again. Amen. And we're going to study the scripture, uh, John chapter 3 verse 1, that you are born again, that this is your identity. You are born again. Uh, township, in the township, you know, when people get born again, they're still fresh. But kill born again. <laughs> <laughs> He says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, right? So the Pharisees was the fivefold of the day, right? The Bible calls him a ruler of the Jews. The Jews were led by the church in that day, right? The church led the nation mostly, right? Uh, uh, how? You're going ahead of me. All right. There was a man of the Pharisees. <coughs> so the Pharisees were... The fivefold of the day, the pastors of the day. In fact, you had two groups, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What's the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees? The Pharisees believe that, uh, okay, the Sadducees do not believe in spirits. They do not believe in resurrection. They don't believe in the supernatural. That's the Sadducees. That's, that's the group that actually crucified Jesus. Jesus was not crucified by the Pharisees. It was the Sadducees because the high priest was of the order of the Sadducees. You see that? And that's why they fought him a lot on resurrection. You see? Then you had the Pharisees. The Pharisees were actually, they were bad, but they were, they were the better end of the stick. You know? So he says, a ruler of the Jews, right? Maybe, okay, no, I, I, I don't want to be too theological today. Next verse. He says, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, 
we know. Are I know. Are we know. That means there's an entire group of people that has recognized this, right? So me and my group have been talking about you. And we have come to the classical amplified. Classical amplified. Let's read. Who came to Jesus at night who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, teacher, we know without any doubt. <laughs> you know this is so true. You know, people in our time can recognize a person as a voice and still not join them. They know you, you, you are the one we've been praying for, but they still will not come together with that person. Right? He says, we know without any doubt that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs, these wonders, these attesting miracles that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus is fascinated by the miracles of Jesus. The supernatural manifestations that are in the life of Jesus. right? And uh, his group as well. So he has come as a representative. So everybody has been talking. So he's like, hey, I want to have a conversation with this man by myself. And he says, hey, the miracles you are producing, the signs and wonders, they only happen when God is with you. They recognize that God is with the man. Right? So, what is this conversation about? The supernatural. Hello, Bezalel. The, the conversation is about what? The supernatural. Demonstrations of power. Miracles. This is the whole... This is where everything starts. The supernatural. Now, Jesus, in answering him... Go back to the New King James. Go back to the New King James. Right? Hmm. Jesus, so he's responding to a question about the supernatural in his life. He says, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is what? Born again. So he says, I am doing these miracles because of the fact that I am born again. You're like, oh, Jesus was born again. I want to explain to you the entire concept of being born again. It's different meanings, right? He says, I say, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So this was the kingdom at work. But he says the kingdom is functioning because I am born again. Yes. Amen? Amen? We get it, right? So this was an answer. He wasn't changing the conversation. People think he was changing. No. These are, it's just that he's not using the language that people expect. So he says, the miracles I am doing, the signs and wonders that I'm doing is not just a matter that God is with me. It has to do with my nature. It's not something of, I'm not borrowing this thing. It's not an outside factor. It's my nature. I'm, this is what's most normal to me. Hello? So he says, unless one is what? Born again. So question, what does it mean to be born again? Amen? What does it mean to be born again? Okay, let's continue with it. Let's continue with it. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is what? Old. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Remember, Nicodemus wants to also manifest the supernatural. So that's why he's saying, oh, so okay, I also want to do these things. So how do I get into this thing? Do I need to enter my mother's womb again? All right? Next verse. Then Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of what? Water. And what? And the spirit. He cannot what? Enter the kingdom of God. Now he gives a bit more language to it. He says being born of water and of the spirit. Next verse. That which is what? Born of the flesh is flesh. So he's saying what you are talking about is natural birth. And he says flesh going back into your mother's womb is just natural birth. But I am not talking about natural birth. I am talking about spiritual birth. So this thing is not happening because of my flesh. It's because, happening because of my what? My spirit. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what is spirit. So being born again is the rebirth of the spirit. Amen? It's not the rebirth of the soul. So man is a spirit, right? 
He is a spirit because God is a spirit. God said in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He says, and let us make man in our image. The word image means resemblance and likeness, right? So, God in the book of uh, uh, John chapter 4, I believe it's verse 24. It says, God is a spirit. So, if God makes man in his image, it means man is a what? Is a spirit. Now, that spirit has a soul. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions, right? And that now the spirit and the soul are intertwined in such a way it's difficult to separate them hello they are intertwined in such a way that it's difficult to separate them there's no part of you where you're like okay i feel it's my spirit now i feel it's my no they are intertwined and the scripture shows us the the unity of it he says the word of god the word of god is quick and active sharper than into edged sword he says the word of god is so sharp it has the capacity to separate the spirit and the soul then he says how you know the spirit and the soul, uh, soul are united he then says joints and what and marrow he talks about how the bones are are together so he speaks of a unity right then he says thoughts and intents do you understand how difficult it is to separate a person's thoughts from their motives so he says the unity of thoughts and motives is the same unity of the spirit and the soul and he says the only thing that has the capacity to show you that this is the spirit and this is the soul is the word of god hello that's the only thing that can show you it's the only it's the only the only knife my god it's the only knife that can separate them. It's, it's, it's the sharpest knife of all. Right? This is the soul and the spirit. So man is a spirit. He has a soul. And that soul and spirit are intertwined. They are put inside a physical body. What is the physical body? The physical body is made out of skin, bones, and blood. You see that? That is the physical body in definition. Skin, bone, and blood. Now, that body is what houses the spirit and the soul. It's what allows the spirit and the soul to function in the earth. Without a, without a body, spirits are not allowed. Okay, I need to say this right. Spirits cannot exercise dominion on earth without a spirit, uh, without a physical body. Spirits can function in the earth without a body, but they are not allowed to exercise dominion. Dominion was given to those who have spirit, soul, and body. And that's why when man loses his body, he checks out. You see that? You check out... <coughs> You check out not because your assignment is done. You check out because of the, the thing that is supposed to... Hey, Lord Jesus. Oh. You check out... Assignments are eternal, Bazalwan. Assignments are what? Are eternal. In the kingdom, there's no such thing as retiring. There's no such thing as retiring, Right? Assignments are eternal. When you are okay, when you are done with one phase of life, what do you do? You graduate to another phase of life. When you are done with one phase of life, you graduate to another phase of life. Now, what we are experiencing, we say, okay, a person died at 90 because the assignment was done. Not necessarily so, right? It's because their body could not contain their spirit anymore. Remember, man could live up to 900 years. How were those people living? Hello? How were those people living at 900 years? So that means at 90, he picked up a new assignment. He did it until 200. Oh my God, what a people. Imagine what it is to live for 900 years. 900 years. In those days, when, when the Bible says, uh, in those days, when you were young, you were 500. 500, you are middle aged. That's what we call middle aged. In those days, that's why old is relative, Bazalwan. It has to do with what, what, what light have you come to recognize in the realms of the spirit? Uh, what light have you come to recognize in the realms of the spirit? In our time, <coughs> in our time, if you get married at 40, we think we are late. But the Bible says people got married at 40. In fact, that was the standard marriage age. It's because they would live up to 120, 180. So that's why 40 was still young. 
So because of sin has cut the age of men to 70 and 80. So that's why we say when you are 14, you are getting married, you are late. But it's not. It's according to the day. But according to God, you are not late. I mean, why does the Bible say at 99 years old, God appeared to Abraham? God had destiny conversation at 100. That means at 100, you can still have destiny conversations. Hi, was alone. At 100, it's not about, we think you're destined. I mean, look, 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 look. It, it all has to do with the light we, we, we walk by. Is the light in your life, does it allow you to live up to 50? Does it allow you to live up to 80? Or does it allow you to live up to 300? The Bible says that there was Enoch. Enoch walked with God. The Bible says he, he had children until he was 65. He had children until he was 65. At 65, he started to walk with God. We think at 65 you are late, you are... It says at 65, he started to walk with God until at 300. At 300, Enoch had so walked with God, he then was translated to he didn't die. He didn't die. Hello. He did not die. He just learned... (laughs) You're like, no, his assignment was done, so he checked out. Who told you his assignment was done? He's just doing his assignment. If I decide right now to live in South Africa for 80 years until I'm 80 and then at 80 I decide to move to the US, does that mean my assignment is done? No. I've just changed locations. So he just shifted the location of his function. Hello? So, where am I going with this? Okay. So your, your body houses your spirit. Right? For as long as your body is strong, any assignment God gives you, you can do. Hello? Any assignment God gives you, you can do. If God gives you an assignment at 80 and your body is strong, you can still push. If you get to the age of 100 and God gives you a new assignment, you can still push. The assignments of God in your life are as per the capacity of your body. If your body is limited, so is your assignment. Did you see that? Now, let's get back to this talk, this conversation that Jesus has with Nicodemus. He says... That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is what is spirit. So let's discuss this thing called being born again. Say born again. again. Say born born again. So when you are born again, it is the spirit that is born again. Right? So in the garden of Eden, God, now the first man and woman were in the garden of Eden. And then God gave a commandment to the first man, Adam. He said, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Now, when God gives, it was not the fruit that killed Adam. It was not the fruit that caused Adam to to die spiritually, right? It was not the fruit. It was the transgression of the commandment. Sin is transgression. Hey, Lord Jesus. Sin is transgression of commandment. Hmm. Sin, by, by scripture, by scripture, sin is the breaking of law. When you've broken law, you have sinned. Hello? Now, we are only conscious of the Ten Commandments. You shall not, you shall not, you shall not. Ten Commandments. You break those, you are a sinner, you are sinning, etc., etc. But in the New Testament, while the Ten Commandments are there, the, the nature and shape of the conversation has changed with God, right? They are still there. Amen? Amen? But the conversation has changed, right? God then says, I give you a new law. Jesus says, I give you a new law. And what is that law? He says, you should love one another as I have what? Loved you. Now, every time Jesus introduces a new law, he actually cancels every other law. Huh? I'm gonna, um, walk with me. Now. Don't get into assumptions. <laughs> when he gives you a new law, what does he do? He cancels the other laws, right? So, in, it's like when he introduced the New Testament, he canceled the Old Testament, right? So, in the Old Testament, in order for you to be right with God, you have to sacrifice bulls and all these things in order for you to be right. In the New Testament, he brings up a new, he says, there has been one sacrifice that is taking care of everything. So, in the New Testament, He cancels. Well, he doesn't really cancel. He introduces you to something better. Amen? And what is that? He says, love one another. Because within the law of love, every other commandment is included. 
In fact, we are given two laws. He says, you should love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all your strength. Then he says, love your neighbor as you what? Love yourself. The Ten Commandments, five of them are towards God. Five of them are towards men. So in saying love the Lord your God with all of your heart, he has dealt with the first five. And by saying love your neighbor as you love yourself, he has dealt with the second five. Because within love, when you love, you will not break those things. (sighs) You see that? So within the law of love, you won't lie because you what? You love. Within the law of covetousness, you won't covet because you what? You love. So love takes care. So that's why he introduced. So in the New Testament, in actual fact, we only have the law of love. Well, two laws. The law of love and the law of faith. Because that's why he says, whatever is not of faith is what is sin. So when you, when you don't express faith according to God, you are sinning. <laughs> You're like, that's unfair. Hebrews 11 verse 6, what does it say? Whoever comes to God must believe that he what? He is. But without faith, it is impossible to what? To please God. Because... So, let's look at sin. Why does a person decide at that moment that I am going to steal this money? I want to move to in the church and the finance team didn't take the money. And someone has got the keys and says, oh, but I he take. why does he take? Because he does not believe God is there. You don't believe God is there. So your lack of faith is the, is the result of the sin came because you don't have faith. So when you have faith, you, so what is faith? Is, is you believe God exists. So you believe that God is there. So when you don't believe that God, so look at if you, when in the moment of sin, in the heat of sin, if you knew that God is there, if you, well, if not that you knew, if you believed, because he's there whether you believe it or not. If you believe that God was there, would you do it? You would not do it. So what made you sin? The unbelief. Right, this is right. So that's why the Bible says, whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not on believing in the existence of God is what leads to sin. Amen. Amen. All right, we were still going somewhere. (laughs) So, he breaks the law of God. Adam, the only, we are where we are. Because God told the man, Oscar, All the pain, all the suffering in the world right now, think about it, is because a person, I, God said, do not what? Do not eat. Do not eat. Don't, don't eat it. I, now, the Bible says, here's what the Bible then says, ne? and this is why it was sin. Adam was not tempted. Adam was not tempted. To be tempted is to be lured into sin. So we are not where we are because Adam was tempted and then he yielded to the temptation. No. Adam willfully did it. He was not tempted. The one who was tempted was Eve. The serpent had no conversation with Adam. He said to Eve, so the serpent was smart. Hey, Satan. He knew he can't, I can't get this guy. I can't. Like a lamb tall on Gassim Gray. But this one, this one, this one has a power. Do you see how powerful women are? So he tempts if, if he says this, 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 if it's. Nothing happens when Eve eats. The world, because God did not tell Eve, don't eat. He said to Adam, don't eat. So the one who had the commandment did not, at that point, had not done anything wrong. (laughs) 
Then the Bible says, Eve gave to Adam. He gave it. Amu tempta. Hari. There were no words. There was no exchanging of words to say, hey, uh, eat this, it will make you... Uh-uh. He, she just said, hmm. <laughs> That's all. That's what that Eve did. Adam Anonanara. Awa. And when he ate, the Bible says God walked in. He says, and when God walked in, Adam had God. When, when he hears God, the Bible says he hid himself. He hid himself from God. Then God said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Because there was a spot where they would meet. Adam knew that when God comes, he goes to that spot as well. And, Adam, and notice, it, God did not say, Adam and Eve. He says, Adam, Adam. Because the center of fellowship was Adam. And he says, where are you? He says, I hid myself among, because I was afraid. He says, what? You are, now you are discussing something. You have to understand. Until that point, men did not know something called fear. Men did not know. Fear came in because of sin. He did not know anything called uh, fear. And he says, I was af- I heard you coming and I was afraid. And so I, and then he says, but who told you that? Because God knew the, you are now receiving information from another location. I am not the center of this information. He says, who told, he says, who told you that you were naked? Now, if you study Genesis chapter 2, right, the Bible says they were actually naked, right, naked and not ashamed, but after sinning, he is now in the same state, but he is ashamed, so what changed? Consciousness, hello, it was what? Consciousness, what changed was his consciousness, so before, he is naked, but he is so spirit conscious, so he's more conscious of the realm of the spirit than he is of this, when he eats because of sin, he becomes more conscious of the natural. The, 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 the Bible doesn't say the, the, the glory left. It doesn't say that. The glory did not leave him. The glory did not leave him. Because the glory in essence was still there. It's just that he was now seeing from another place. He was using a different set of eyes. The Bible says the eyes of them both were opened. So when they are open, so what does it mean? How, how, what do you mean they were open? It means they were shut to natural realities. They were open to spiritual realities. But you see, that's what sin does. Sin closes your eyes from spiritual realities. Don't you notice believers who once walked with God, they start now noticing certain things. But you're like, but this thing has always been there. Why are you now conscious of it? It's because now your eyes have been opened to another reality. You are now conscious of things that you are not supposed to be conscious of. And God, you have to understand, because of the progress of humanity, God was always going to create clothing for Adam. But the issue is now, Adam was now demanding clothing through another source. So on that day, Adam, God said, you will surely die. And get He said, you will, what? Die. But Adam does not fall down dead. In fact, he's still alive. He still walks. He's still talking and everything. So did God lie? No. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a physical body. So it is his spirit that died. Now, death is not the cessation of life. It's not the ending of life. It doesn't mean like something disappears. It is the separation from life from a source. That's death. Let me give you an example. So, Adam is... He, he eats on this day, but the Bible says he only dies when he's 930 years old. So what happened? He only dies physically when he's 930 years old. It's because his spirit died. But it would then take another 900 years before his physical body would fall down dead. Hello. Okay. Let me give you an example for you to see this. When we say death is not the cessation of life and how his spirit died and then it was only later on that he's born. Here's a tree. We pluck it up from its roots, right? And then we leave it there. 
It's still on the ground, right? It's still where? On the ground. But it's now separated from the ground by way of roots. And this will help you understand why the presence of God was still with Adam, yet he was dead. Because he was, the, the thing is his spirit, the inner man was now separated from God, right? Now, that tree, we leave it there. And then we come back after 30 days and we find it withered away. The day it withered, is it the day it died? When did it die? When we plucked it up. The, the withering away is the manifestation of death. So Adam died on the day that he ate. But it would then take 900 years before the death would manifest. A person can die spiritually now. Hey, Lord Jesus. But it takes years before that thing manifests. A person can be separated from God now. But it will take years before it, that thing manifests. So when you get born again, it is now your spirit gets born again. You see, your spirit is united with God once again. In fact, when we read in the book of Ezekiel 36, it says a new heart and a new spirit I will give to you. Let's go there. E e Ezekiel 36. Do you still love Jesus? Yes. Am I right? <laughs> the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 25. <clears throat> okay, 26, verse 26. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Then what does he say? He says, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of what? Of flesh. So the old spirit. Now, what happens? You're like, okay, so when we get born again, we say, Jesus is Lord. What happens is we get out and then, no. But it's like the infusing of a new life. You see that? God puts a new life inside of you. That is so powerful. It destroys the old life. You see that? That's, that life is called eternal life. When that life comes inside of you, we call it being born again. Amen? We call, so, Aona and Twila, eh, shum, and then, shum. no. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But it's the literal putting in. Your life is, you know, when we say you supplant something, you see that? You put something in that is so powerful, but it destroys the old. So that life comes inside of you. And that thing is, is, is God can't allow us to see that operation. It's too powerful. Amen. Now go back to John chapter 3. Are we still here, Bazalon? Yeah. Are we learning something? Yeah. Okay. He says, Jesus said, yeah, you, 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 I think it's verse 3, verse 3. Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is what is born again, he cannot, what? See the kingdom of God. So then, to be born again means, please write this down, it means to be born of God, it means to be born of God. It means to be born. Okay, to be born of God, comma. Born of the word of God. And then number three, born of the spirit of God. So within your spirit now, you carry the nature of of God, of his word, and of his spirit. The nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we see this already. We already saw that. He says, that which is born of the spirit. Amen? It's what is spirit. So, to be born again is to be born of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Then, go to John chapter 1, verse 12. Or maybe verse 10. Verse 10. Yeah? He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Right? Next verse. He came to his own, and his own did not what? Receive him. Next verse. But as many as what? Received him. To them he gave the right to become what? Children of God. To those who what? Who believe in his name. Next verse. Who were born. Now. 
Barcelona. There's a, something that confuses the church. Now, people think when we got born again, God adopted us, right? They use the, they, they use the scriptures that speak about adoption, right? Adoption in those days versus adoption in our time is two different things, right? Adoption in those days had to do with receiving a person into maturity, not necessarily a person coming into the family. Amen? Hello? Yeah. So, when the Bible says that we are born again, it's literal. We are born of God. It's literal. That's why he says, who were born, not of what? Blood. So, he says, your birth is not from your blood. It's not a natural birth, right? He says, no of the will of the what of the flesh no of the will of what of man he says but born of what of god so you literally carry the nature of god inside of you first yes. john chapter 3 verse 1 first john chapter 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called what Children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. What does the Bible mean? Remember the scripture we just read. He says he came to his own and his own received him not. He was in the world and the world did not know him. Because they thought the son of God when he comes. He will, be, he will come and he will be this shining, shining, shining person. He is ever. That's why the Jews missed Jesus. Because they were expecting an ever shining person. They were expecting the one who would come out of the womb of Mary. Would be an ever shining person. But. He had a normal human body. When you looked at him, he looked normal, right? The Bible said, but within, inside, he was God. Inside, he had the nature of God. So the Bible says, therefore, the world does not know us. So us becoming children of God, naturally, there is nothing you can say about us that says we are children of God. When you get born again, okay, by way of natural standards, is there a difference between children of God and those who are not born of God? Hello? Hello? Is there something between, if you take a Christian who is a child of God, right? Then you take a non-believer, someone who has not received the kingdom inside of them. Can you tell by way of physical appearance that this is a Christian, this is not a Christian? No, because the birth is not, is not physical, it's spiritual. So it says, people don't know that we are children of God in the same way that they, they did not know that Jesus was a child of God. Now, good Jesus, all right? But that does not change the fact of who we are. The fact that naturally it does not show that we are children of God does not mean that we are not children of God. Eh? Am I saying it right? Well, you catch my flow. All right. Now, next verse. Let's read this together. One, two, three, go. Pause. Can you read that with the... the, the look, ne? when John was... There is an emotion to scripture. Amen. There's a, 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 an emotion to scripture. <laughs> I wish I could show you, right? The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was, there was an expression. It was, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with, the, he was with God in the beginning. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the life. No, there's an expression to this was writers. You see that. So you need to experience the emotion of the writer. In, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was what? Made. Then he says, in him was a life. And the life was the light of man. Then he changes. He says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John the same came as a witness to the light himself was not that light but he was sent to bear witness to that light this is the light the, this is the true light which gives light to every man who is in the world then he says he was in the world and the world was made by him yet the world knew him not but to as many do, do you see it has an emotion so he says, but there's a, there's a, you know, like musicians, you know. So when we start the scripture, start from the beginning. Oh, no, the beginning, the beginning. Aha, you get it now, ne? Aha. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called 
he was overwhelmed by the love of the father. So when you say, behold, one man of love, the father is bestowed on us. You miss what God was. You miss the, the communication of the writer. Amen. So behold, what manner, what kind, what volume of love. He, he, he gives you this thing, right? It's like the family. Like there's a, like the, there's a family. Who, 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 which family would you like be, to be part of? Like, oh, you guys like your families, no? <laughs> you realize there's drama in, in other families, no? <laughs> so let's say you wanted to become a part of I don't know which family, right? So when that family takes you in, and you came from nothing, in fact, between you and that family is absolute nothingness. When that family now brings you in and they show you genuine love, now you are writing about them having taken you into that family. So he says, behold, he's overwhelmed by this thing. Behold what man of love the father has been. Remember, this is the man who wrote about Jesus being the only begotten. Because until Jesus died, he was the only begotten of the father. He was the only born. Hello. He was the only one born of the father. The Bible says, for God. So what? Love the world that he gave his own only begotten so until jesus died he was the only one he was the target of god's love did did god did not have other children elsewhere he had other people but he didn't have other children so at the death burial and resurrection of jesus jesus gave birth to a new creation and all those who receive that word about uh, about jesus dying and resurrecting they come into the family so the same man now there is his writing when he was writing the gospel is now he's writing he was writing before the resurrection so now he's writing post the resurrection to say that now we are now i am in the same family Amen. hello Amen. but men of love the fathers be, that we should be called children of god therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him next verse then he says beloved now hello Amen. he says beloved what now are we the what the children of god not when jesus comes back not when certain things happen. He says, now are we the children of God. Then he says, it has not been revealed yet. Meaning, outwardly, you can't see anything about that. There's no shiningness about us. But we are children of God now. He says, it has not been revealed what we shall what be. But, when, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? Like him. For we shall see him as he is. What does he mean? He's saying that when... The day Jesus comes back in his glory. Now John gives a description of Jesus in the book of Revelation. So he says the day Jesus comes and he stands in the cloud and he returns. On that day the Bible shows us that we will not all sleep but we shall all be what? Translated. We shall all be changed. So on that day we will also be ever shining. Amen. Amen. But until then. The glory remains inside. That's why the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. But we are children of God now. Not in the day to come. You are a child of God now. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Hello. Okay, Pastor Jeff. Do you feel like a baloy? (laughs) Do you wake up and say, I feel like I'm a vonga today. But why do we do that with God? Why do you want to be to feel like a child of God. Mm? You want to feel? I don't feel like a Christian today. I'm gonna Christian is a child of God. So you say I don't feel. So what kiri when? since your days, you did not deny who you are. You did not say I'm not a mavunga because I don't feel like it. If I was a mavunga, I should have the feeling. <laughs> you don't need it to feelings. So being a child of God has got nothing to do with your feelings. It's a reality. It's who you are. It does not change with the times or the seasons. It doesn't change with your prayer life. If you pray today, you are a child of God. If you did not pray, you are a child of God. If situations hit you, you are still a child of God. If you, are, if you overcome situations, you are still a child. It does not, the fact that you said Jesus is Lord and you believed in the resurrection, you are a child of God. Finish and clap. Amen. Amen. You are a child of God. 
Now tell me. You're a child of God. One of the other things that he said about the children of God is, you know, and we're, we're going to go through all of them. We're going to go through all of them. And I want you, I'm going to link your life with that. I'm going to say, I'm going to show you how you don't link a lot of things in your life with feelings. But you want to link things in Christianity with feelings. The Bible never said any, it's like speaking in tongues. People link speaking in tongues with feelings. There is no scripture that links speaking in tongues with feelings. The Bible says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue does not what? Talk to man. But he talks to who? To God. How be it in the spirit he speaks what? Mysteries. He said nothing about feelings there. Then he says, he who speaks in an, uh, in, in an unknown tongue, he strengthens himself, he edifies himself, he charges himself. But then, you're like, oh yeah, there it is, charging. But verse 14, don't forget verse 14. He says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Okay, right now. Who can feel their spirit? Well, you are a spirit. But I'm like, which is the communication now? Can you feel your spirit? The fact that you feel your spirit doesn't mean you don't feel your spirit doesn't mean your spirit is not there. Or like I don't feel my spirit, so my spirit is not there. When I feel it, it's it's, it's there. He says, My spirit prays, but my understanding is what is unfruitful. So what will I do? Ultra, are, so what do I feel like doing? Are, what will I do? Speaking about will, will is choice. What do I choose to do? I will, will is choice. So I choose to pray with the spirit. It's a choice. It doesn't say God makes me pray with the spirit. I will pray with the spirit and I will what? Pray with the understanding also. Now the choice to pray is up to Paul. It's not with God. And Paul does not, he doesn't, feel, he doesn't say I feel like praying with the spirit. And now I feel like praying with the understanding. It's a choice. Everything in the kingdom of God is left to the realm of choice. Now, feelings can come. They will come. You will pray in time. And today you will, but you will pray. Listen, that thing is like this. Your feelings are like this. Glory to God. Now, the Bible says, whosoever. I'm showing you examples of, the Bible says, if you can have faith as a master seed, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt, uh, it, it, it will take place. Now, my question, my question, did he say, if you can have faith and feel powerful? Because that's how we read the scripture. Do you know, if you said that scripture, right, and you were, you were feeling horrible and miserable, and you said the scripture, the scripture is still true. When you, the, God blesses you in the action, not in the feeling of the action. Are you all here? Amen. He blesses you in the action. He's, he's, he's giving. It's like giving. In giving. In fact, when God told you to give, He says, "He that goes forth and weepeth." <laughs> he says, "He who goes forth and what and weeps shall doubtless." He says, "We're not along. We're not You see that? Then at other times He will say, "Learn to be a cheerful giver." But in in the context of Scripture, most of the time God calls us to serve as a choice. Then number two, feelings follow after. Amen. So number one, you are born of who? Of God. And now you are a child of God. Amen. Now, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Are you learning something? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Is this it? 1 Peter. 1. Eh? Anyone? I can believe. Oh, no, you're right. Uh, 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 verse 23, sorry. <laughs> verse 23. Verse 23. Look, it says, having been what? Born again. Not of what? Corruptible seed. But what? Incorruptible. Through the word of God, which what? lives and abides forever. So he says, you are now born. Now, this is the strength of being born again. When he says seed, right? The seed is the sperm, right? So he's communicating language of DNA now. So he says, now you are born of a seed, of a sperm that is not corruptible. Now, when we say something is corruptible, we say that 
it can be affected by decay. Right? It has weaknesses. So he says, you are born not of a seed that has weaknesses. Now, you need to understand this. Lord Jesus. Jesus, think about it now. Are you all still here? Jesus. Did Jesus come from that? Jesus says this way. He says, I am from above. Right? He says, I am from where? Above. But did he really descend a child like a baby came down from the heavens and then Mary caught that baby? No. So what does he mean when he says, I'm, I'm from above? Because he came through a womb just like everybody else. When he says he's born of God, he's a child of God, he's the son of God, he came through a womb, through, every, uh, 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 through a womb, just like everybody else. So what makes him the son of God? What is the thing that makes him a son of God? Because he came through a womb like everybody else. What gives him that right? It was the sperm that produced him. The word of God is the sperm of God. Amen. When God impregnates, he impregnates by speaking. When he speaks, immediately there's pregnation. And the Bible says, the seed is what is the word of God. The sperm is the word of God. When we put the word, the ground is like a womb. The seed is like the sperm. And it causes the ground to germinate, right? Now, in the same way, God gave Mary a word through the angel Gabriel. That word came into her womb, was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, right? And then pregnancy took place. Now, Mary, right? Mary did not have the seed of a man. Remember what I told you in the beginning. When women ate the seed, ate the, 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 the fruit. Next <laughs> apple, but there was no apple. The Bible does not say apple, right? When she ate the, nothing happened, right? Because the sin principle does not lie with women. It lies with the man. So, now, you're like, uh, uh, but, but, oh, so you say women don't have sin. No, I'm saying the sin principle, the ability to transfer sin does not lie with women. It lies with men. Hello. That's why even when God talks about sin, he'll talk about, he doesn't say the sin of your mother's house. He says the sin of your what? Of your father's. Because sin is principally from men. So, the, the corruption the thing that would transfer sin nature did not come into the womb of Mary. The seed that came into the womb of Mary did not have sin. And because that seed did not have sin, Jesus was born sinless. He had no... You, you have to understand, eh? Jesus... <laughs> Lord Jesus. De, Jesus, he did not have a desire inside of him, right? To do wrong. Because the principle was not there. Let me show you. Sin, sin. Those who have kids. <laughs> yeah. You, you understand my language now? You have to understand. My son, nobody taught him to lie. No one. Absolutely. No one. Himself. Himself. He, he, he learnt it on his own. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let me show you. I'm going to say something he did. So he got, he was give, he doesn't like doing his homework. So he got homework, right? Nobody taught him this. He got homework. After he got that homework, he decided he's going to arrive at home and he's going to chaff it under the bed. Nobody told him. No, no, he saw that from no one. But there's a nature inside of him. There's a nature functioning, and he chuffed it, and he acted normal, and we said, did they give you homework? He said, no. <laughs> and he played his Xbox game until my wife found it. But who taught him that? No one. It's nature. <laughs> it's, it's what? It's na- Look at some of your kids. Look, who, who taught, some of your kids, I mean your child, he can, get, he can decide to get in a certain way. Who taught him that? You didn't say, do this, but the nature. Now, Jesus was not born with a nature like that. Are 
Are you understanding? That's why even when he was tempted, when we say he was tempt- tempted in all points, you have to understand. He was not tempted like a woman, like a woman was naked before him and then Jesus said, no, 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 no. No, he, he's not that because he did not have that kind of nature within him. The only thing that they could, that Satan could present before him is destiny issues. It's destiny issues. That's why he says, turn these stones into a It was, use the power of God without instruction. Then he said, throw yourself here. Meaning, put God in a position to save you. Whereas, uh, uh, yeah, put, put God in a position, sub, put yourself in a, in a compromising position just to see if God will be faithful to who he said he is. Then the last one is, bow down to me. I will give you all these kingdoms. It was destiny issues. It wasn't like we are. But the nature, the, the, the origin of those, of those temptations was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's where all sin comes from. You see, it's not like, one of the Pharisees at Tuba, and then no, it's not like that. The, 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 the terrain was completely different. So, when the Bible says that we are born of an incorruptible seed, and this is why the Bible says these words, have you ever thought of the scripture that says that uh, it says, He who is born of God does not sin? Maybe let's read that before we go home. Ne? Hello. First John chapter three verse nine. Did you learn something? All right. Look at this scripture. Now we agree. Do you agree that you are born of God? Uh-huh. Yes. Do you agree with me? Yes. That you are born of God? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Now, read the scripture in that light. One, two, three, go. Pause. Now, you who has been born of God, since you got born of God, have you sinned before? Just lift your hands. The Bible says if you say you have no sin, you, you lie. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. It's the Bible. I'm not saying you are lying. I'm just saying the Bible says. Verse 10. 1 John chapter 1 verse 10. Listen. 1, 2, Okay, since you got born again, have you seen before? <laughs> Who can you have not seen? You say God is a liar. You are, why, that's what the Bible says. Now let's bring up, I want to contradict, ne, to bring a reality. Ne? He says, if we say we have not seen, we make him a liar, and his word is not why? in us. Right? Next verse, which is chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah. Look, my little children, these things I... Who, who is he talking to here? Who is he talking to here? Who is he talking to here? Little children. Not even children. Little children. My little children. These things I write to you. So that you don't sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father... Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation. Uh, come on. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. Not only for ours, but also for the whole world. Contradiction. If, so he says, if we say we have not sinned, we make him out alive. Then he says, my literal, I'm saying these things to you so that you don't sin. Right? He says, but if you do sin, he says, we have Jesus who is the one who is at the right hand of the Father, our advocate. He speaks on our behalf. Right? But then, in chapter 3, he then introduces something else. He says, he who is born of God does not sin. Hamara, you just told us, if we sin, 
we are okay. Jesus will fix the problem. But now you are saying, hey, the one who is born of God, I read to you. Go back to chapter 3. Yeah. Chapter 3. Where was I? In chapter 3 verse verse 9. Right? In chapter 3 verse 9. Right? Can we read that together? 1, 2, 3, go. Yeah. Uh-huh. John was confused. He just said, if we say we have not seen, we are lying. And if we do sin, Jesus will sort out matters. Now you are changing things. You are saying, if we are born of God, remember we are children of God. If we are born of God, we don't sin. Then he says, he cannot. No ability. Cannot. I see, will not. He didn't say, he will not sin. He says, he can he does not have the capacity nor the ability to do so. Because why can't he do so? Because he has been born of God. So I sinned. So I'm not born of God anymore. No. It's then the classes of Christians. You see that? In the Christians, okay, let's 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 go to another scripture. Are we still okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. Mm-hmm. All right. He says, I write to you what? Little children. Because you're what? Your sins are what? Forgiven for his what? Namesake. Next verse. I write to you what? Fathers. Because you have not what? You have known him who is what? From the beginning. Then he says, I write to you, young men, because you what? You have overcome the what there? Then he says, I write to you, little children, because you have known who? The father. Next verse. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him who is what? From the beginning. Every time he talks about fathers, he says, the fathers are known by knowing the one who is from the beginning. Then when he says little children, he says, the little children... Know the father. Remember, the father is the one who gives and forgives. So little children want what? Give me. Forgive me. That's the prayer of the little child in Christ. Give me. Forgive me. Give me. Forgive me. He says little children. Then he says after that. <laughs> Bishop. <laughs> King Garlifila had. What the assets or Bila Bila. My, my content. Give me. Forgive me, God. <laughs> this is Bible, right? Then he says, young men. Then he says, there's another class. Those who have grown up. He says, the young men are the ones who what? Overcome the wicked one. And he says, they have the word of God abiding in them. Then he says, they, they, lastly, he says, the fathers. About the fathers, he says the same thing. You know the one who is from the beginning. So once you understand these three classes, you will understand that scripture. That he, when he now says, I, those who are born of God cannot sin. He is now talking to fathers. Those who have come to the maturity. They've come to maturity in Christ. So those kinds of people, they cannot sin. I... Look, ne? in our day, we judge fathers by the fact that you have a big church. You have a what what? You have a what what? Like in Kalopolis, you have a congregation of 5,000, we say you are a father. In these days, they judged you by your relationship with God. That you are a father. And they judged you by the fact that you cannot sin. <laughs> Look, Lidi, Mazala, I'm closing. Look, the fathers, let me, let me make clear about what it means to be a father in the faith, according to scripture. All right? He says, you have known him who is from the beginning. Then he speaks about you cannot sin. He, he speaks about those who cannot sin. Hebrews chapter 6, go there, quickly. 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 4. Can you read the scriptures? And tell me, does this apply to every Christian? For it is what? Impossible. It is what? Impossible. For those who were once enlightened. Have what? 
tasted the heavenly gift, partaken of the Holy Spirit. Next verse. Yeah. Have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away. Another version says, if they sin. It speaks about though, if they sin. To renew them again to repentance. If they fall, to renew them again to repentance. Since they crucify again the Son of God, for themselves the Son of God, and put him to an open shame. He says, the fathers, if they sin, it's like they are crucifying the Son of God once again. But he then lists who those kinds of people are. They must have had all those experiences. I, I think that's enough for it. Can we stand up in the presence of the Lord? <laughs> are you blessed? Did you learn something? We'll continue next week again with our identity in Christ. I want you to thank him for the word. Father, we thank you for the word. Shali brakata na baruska paladi abraskota. Jala masuta libre dele beruska pati ala mambrandila. Ziala sopra kata na baruska pata liga baruska pata laya. Reketele bruska panti ala braka toska braka tala baraka taya. Shala baraka te akapari libre dele beruska antalia. Father, we give you praise for your word. Father, as your people go home, may you continue to bring light. And continue to unfold this word to them. May they continue to know who you have made them in Christ Jesus. I declare the blessing of the Lord upon them. I declare that they are blessed, that they are favored. I declare that as they go forth, they are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I declare they cannot be defeated, O God, because they are born of you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are done.